Using the right tools can help you turn social media from a passive platform where you're just putting out updates and hoping to engage with people into a proactive one. And there's no better tool to do this than Hootsuite. Hootsuite gives you a, a social media dashboard that allows you to monitor what's going on, on the in the social space, especially on Twitter. If you're like most people and you've followed a few accounts on Twitter, you might have a very busy home stream. So I've got in here people like Lord Sugar and we have um, the London Traffic News and so on and so forth. And this can make for a very hectic home stream and hard to follow conversations when they're interspersed with things that other people think are important. What Hootsuite allows us to do is easily segregate some of this information, whether it be from the people we follow or whether it be out on the Twitter platform itself from people we haven't yet followed. And this is quite key, actually. So what we can do along the top here is we have our, our normal tab when you set up a social media account on Hootsuite and it will have your feeds in your home feed and sent feed if you've set those up. But you can also set up other tabs. In fact, you can have up to 20 tabs along here and you create a new tab by clicking on the plus icon here and you give it a name so um, we're going to call this one clients and there we have it we have a new tab now within these tabs we can then put um, streams of information pertinent to the tab so we can just keep an eye on that selective information that we're interested in. So what we're gonna look at first of all is um, an example competitors tab. So in a competitors tab, what I might have done, uh, if you saw one of my previous videos on creating Twitter lists, I may have created a list of all of my competitors on Twitter to follow them. And what I can actually do is add that list in to the Hootsuite stream here and now all of those competitors that I'm following their updates will now come through uh, into this list here and you might have competitors in different sectors so you could set up lists for each of those and have them under the competitor tab but it gets a bit more powerful than that it's not just about proactively physically creating lists but you can dynamically pull back information as well. So what you could actually do is a search for particular queries that may come up in your industry. In this example that we have here, we've set up a search for anyone asking about the word a hotel, or I should more accurately say any status update that contains the word hotel and a question mark and we've added an extra useful bit of information that allows us to only bring back searches within a certain location a certain geocode longitude and latitude and within a 10 kilometer radius of that location as well so these are all of the tweets that have come through within a 10 kilometer radius this location happens to be Norwich that contain the word hotel and have a question mark. So if someone is looking for somewhere to stay or potentially asking about hotel in or around that location, then you could actually jump on that and answer their question for them. Now, if you find it hard to think of what sort of things that you could um, you could monitor in your stream, just brainstorm all of those key words within your sector um, to come up with ideas of all the different things that you could uh, you could potentially search for. So to add more questions to the stream, we could click here and click add stream, and then make sure that we've got Twitter selected, the account if you've got more than one profile that you want to work with, and click on search. Now, Hootsuite does a lovely job of showing you some examples of the things that you could potentially search for. 
So we could search for Twitter search. That will show you any results containing both the words Twitter and search. Owls rock, so the exact phrase, so where these words are used together, exactly somewhere in the tweet. You can do uh, use something called an or operator, so we could search for ninjas or pirates, or both if we wanted to. And then we can negate words. So we could look for tweets that contain a specific word, like in this example, the word super, but not man. And we can search for hashtags. We can do searches from particular accounts. Uh, we can see searches sent to particular accounts, referencing accounts within certain date, date range, ranges, um, positive and negative attitudes within search can also be looked for. We can also use question marks, as we've already said. So in this example, we look for people asking questions about bacon. Or we could filter um, and only show tweets that contain, uh, in this example, the word rainbows, and that actually contains a URL. Uh, the geocode is a special search that you can do and you can if your computer is um, uh, is location aware you can turn on location sensing here but if not you could just type geocode and then colon and then use something like mygeoposition.com to get the latitude and longitude of a location and this is for my local city which is Norwich and I put the latitude in first followed by the longitude then we put a comma and give it a radius of how far from that centre mark we would like it to search so in this example I'm going to do 25 kilometres then I can add other phrases in front of this. So I'm going to look for anyone searching for a workshop asking a question within a 25 kilometer radius of the center of Norwich and I'm going to add that to my stream. There we go. And we can look through this for potential um, business here. Now if it doesn't quite come back with what you were expecting. You could either create a new stream, add a new stream here, or on the little down arrow on the top, we can go to preferences and we can just edit it. So if you notice, there were a few links in there where other people were promoting their own workshops. Well, I wanna get rid of those so I can add minus HTTP, which is the bit that you see before a link, or minus www and that helps to get rid of most of the links not all of them but it does get rid of a good deal so if I now save the changes on that we see that those updates with links have now disappeared not a lot of results there and um, you know other people promoting their stuff for, but from time to time we might get a question about a workshop of some sort that we might be able to uh, answer for someone now one thing that I could also do is I could increase the radius if I think people might be willing to travel a bit further to one of my workshops or I might be willing to go a bit further um, then we can increase the radius to see if we can catch more people but it needn't necessarily be geocode that you include it could just be um, just a query so a question sort of how to use Twitter, how to use Twitter. And if we put that within speech marks, we put question mark, and then we do minus HTTP to get rid of the links and minus www. So now anyone that asks or anyone that does a status update with how to use Twitter in it and it has a question mark in somewhere with no links they will now appear in my stream okay 
So we could then look through this and see if anyone actually needs any help on how to use Twitter and we could possibly point them to an article or something that you've written on your uh, website. So we've got here, have no clue how to use Twitter, exclamation mark, question mark, confused. So we could actually reply to that if we wanted and say, here you go, here's a link to my simple guide on how to use Twitter. So it can be very, very useful in finding people that you don't follow that could be um, potentially a client or someone that you might like to help. Then what you could do is actually create a list of some of these people, once you've answered their questions, and put them under your potential clients tab and add them to a list. Or you could create a local tab and just track a geocode so you could just track everything being said in your location. So we go geocode and we're going to go and back and get me latitude here and longitude here and we're going to track everything that's being said within a 10 kilometer radius get rid of the space of the center of Norwich in the UK so obviously we have to be prepared for some bad language and other things because we're obviously not um, uh, not controlling censoring any of that um, we're not controlling who may come back in the search results so um, but just be aware of that but there you go we've got Everyone who has uh, location tracking on their device or their computer turned on, that Twitter knows is able to see their location and all of their tweets coming through. So you can see everyone uh, within the local area that's sending out a tweet. Handy for a local restaurant or something like that would like to track people in their area, could send out special offers as people are walking past, literally, um, depending on how well you hone your query. and. We could even use this for monitoring what clients are saying as well. So the amount of variations that you could actually have in these tabs really is down to your own creativity uh, in the phrases that you come up with. But it really is a good way to monitor what's going on in the social space and to keep an eye on things without having to literally follow everyone. You could then come in to uh, Hootsuite once, twice a day and check your dashboards for any people that potentially are asking questions within your industry that you'd like to supply them with an answer or help out. Or you could just use it to keep an eye on what people are actually saying in and around where you are, what the trends are and what people are talking about. Really, it's up to you and your creativity to come up with uh, ideas on how you could use it. But Hootsuite is a fantastic tool for making this very, very simple to manage and monitor the social space. So any questions as usual, um, welcome those in the comments below. If not, good luck with Hootsuite. Hope you enjoy using it to monitor your social media presence. Thank you.